on my back, all my legs, the lot, and I ended up in hospital. No, because she won't let me out of the house. It's not funny though. Oh. Can I tell you why it's not funny? If this was the other way around, and a woman was sat here, and a bloke had locked her in a flat, and she had to jump out and injured herself, you lot would not be laughing. Somehow, if it happens to a bloke, that's funny. That's not funny, is it? That isn't. So apparently, there's a male loneliness epidemic right now. Aww. <laughs> Is this the consequences of your own actions? Just like it, like, my way of dealing or coping was just not saying anything to anybody, it was just drinking. There's a lot better things to do in life than be stuck with a toxic, insecure man. Men get recognized for the useless things that they are in society. And what do men do? Oh my god, I'm lonely! Ankle biting news. Throughout history, there have been many things that have happened, right? You know, wars, leaders, different sports situations, and so on and so forth. And one of the most important traits or things to have, especially as a man, is to be able to tuck away your emotions within that moment or whatever so that you can handle that situation and focus on that particular task at hand, right? living in your purpose and drive down that particular path in order to fulfill your mission whatever that may be this is one of the most important things within society we would not have gotten this far if not for that particular trait because emotions can lie emotions can steer you down all kinds of pathways right so you have to be able to manage that in order to lead effectively or fight effectively or whatever it, it may be at the same time, there's an angle to what we, we perceive as masculinity that denies a part of our humanity as men. And that's the idea that men don't have emotions or that we can't express these emotions or that we don't feel anything or that we can't feel anything. Meanwhile, you have studies like this one that paint a completely different picture. A survey from Equimundo, the Center for Masculinities and Social Justice, found that 44% of respondents report suicidal thoughts, and 48% said their online life is better than their day-to-day -day life. The survey found that 46% of the participants said a man should be the one to bring in money and provide for their families, and 41% said a man should always have the final say about decisions in his relationship. Also, according to Equimundo, two-thirds of young men feel that no one really knows them. Pres now, clearly something's wrong if 44% of men polled feel like this, right? There's, there's other polls where it's like, you know, men don't feel like they're enough. Many men are single and, and childless. Many men can't find love. Many men don't seem to have much of a purpose or they feel kind of lost within, within society. And where we are right now, it, it's almost kind of like a, a, a ball of confusion. Like, what the hell is happening? What do we do? But when some men or women speak up for men, they can find themselves receiving pushback from men and women. Um, people have been after me for a long time by because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about that. Well, God, you know. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What do they mean? It's like, well, these men, they're... They don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome and, and, and they don't know what to do. And everyone piles abuse on them. What about feminists or four young men? Out? It's I, 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 swear, it's a cat. I swear to God. It's a cat. I swear to why God, would that you is need, the Why would you need men's rights activists? You guys are seeing it right now. I swear to God, that shit about right wanting to be more vulnerable and seeing feelings, I swear to God, y'all don't really want it. No. Y'all don't really want it because time to time, no. whenever that happens, y'all weaponize that bitch. Now, some of the responses could be attributed to the fact that people just don't like Jordan Peterson. 
I don't necessarily agree with him politically, but some of the things he says when it comes to the mind and so on and so forth, I can side with him there. And in this particular situation, I side with him when it comes to the, the plight of men. And then of course, Shu did, did a uh, video here recently on men and she received pushback as well. From angry femme cells calling me ugly to angry incels saying I'm a grifter who only wants to make money or something. Ridiculous. So before we get into those- And then there, there, there's other people that have things to say and sort of a, a hate for men because they're men. I'm not gonna say that men have done everything perfectly, but I don't believe that we should blanket hate that whole group <laughs> it don't make sense right some men have dealt with tremendous things but they know if they speak up about it then they'll be laughed at or it won't be taken seriously at all they seemed to annoy michelle and she turned around and she reached for a hammer and she crunched it with all of my on my right on my left shoulder and she hit me a second time shouting swearing at me i'm a lying bastard and on the third strike the hammerhead flew off. The handle broke. She hit me so hard with it. And I shouted over to Michelle that there's a police van outside. And as I came down the stairs, I put a long sleeve top on to cover up my arm because it was in a right mess. And there was a policeman stood in the doorway to the living room. There was one stood at the bottom of the stairs. Michelle was in the living room and I heard a voice say, what, what's he done this time? It's somewhat understandable among other men because there's likely a push for forward movement and you can't really move forward if you're hit being held back by your emotions. But what about women? Can you come to them about your issues and expect understanding? I don't know I'm what still that kid. I'm still that kid. I haven't I told seen her him that. in 10 I'm years. Still kid. I'm still that kid. I'm just, I'm tired. I'm depressed. I'm tired. You know, okay. I'm tired. I'm, I'm just break. tired. I'm hurt. I've been through stuff in my life. Because no, that's personal. Him. No, it don't even matter about none of that. Has he had a problem with alcohol? He has a problem with alcohol. He's an alcoholic. One bottle of premium tequila, 71.18. One bottle of regular tequila, 17.52. This is all something that, as an alcoholic, I'm very familiar with. Oh, I don't feel any emotion toward him right now. Why? Because it's all a game. It's all his For M.O. For him to get his way? His M.O. His yep. manipulation of his... I would cry. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm never going to drink again. I'm never going to drive drunk. I'm not... Next day, same old stuff. Yep. This is all your ploy, and I get it. Because I'm an alcoholic, and I've been there, and I've done it. So whatever this young man is actually dealing with, he's not telling him, right? He's not being forthright with whatever's going on. And if you look at the environment, at, at who's digging into his soul right there, how can anybody be surprised, right? When you say that you've dealt with something as a man to some women and their response is, you act like a little bitch right now. You're going to be less likely to tell them anything. To know that even among women that are stereotypically supposed to be more nurturing and understanding and you still won't be heard, that's gotta suck. When I say that men don't have emotions, I'm not saying that men literally don't have emotions. I'm saying that there are certain belief systems in place within our society that make it so that men's issues are often ignored. Because there, there's a belief system that you can't really speak up about what's going on with you or that men have to ignore their emotions altogether, it kind of opens up the door of temptation for some women that you may love, that you may be, be with, so on and so forth, to use that against you if you were to open up about what you're going through. Is it any wonder why men's mental health is in crisis? Yes, because soon as um, a man opens up to a woman and tells them like their deepest, darkest secrets, women tend to use that against men. And I don't know why. I'm a woman and I don't know why. This, of course, shows up in relationships, the justice system, and, you know, even, you know, uh, paternity court. You are not the father. One of the most powerful things in this world, in my humble opinion, is a man's intentions, right? If you get a man that has focused his intentions to being a great husband, great father, great citizen, so on and so forth, then he's going to put everything into that and, and do it as effectively as he possibly can. But what happens when the system or the woman that you love, that, that you're, that you're in, in, intending to provide and protect for, 
doesn't value any of your intentions. Mr. Rasmussen, you are not the father. <laughs> Miss yes. Miller. Be respectful. I'm sorry. Miss Miller. I'm sorry. Yes. That's a lot of nerve considering the alternative is somebody that don't want nothing to do with you or your child. I'm sorry. That's a lot of nerve. Does your love for the, the uh, children does not matter? Does all of that not matter? The fact that you were intending that you were focused on this family doesn't matter? Many men have, have been broken down by this particular situation. Yeah, nothing's really happening. In fact, in some situations, men's uh, emotions, values, intentions are valued so little that they'll still have to pay child support for a kid that's not even theirs. Mr. Manser, you claim you spent five years in prison for failing to pay child support for the defendant, Ms. Sears' son, Dylan. That's right. You are not oh god his not. father oh man five years in prison i'm not saying that this particular belief system needs to just be completely abolished right i can see throughout history where there are positive applications to men basically uh focusing on the mission while putting aside the momentary emotion right but there, there are major issues, in my humble opinion, that need to be addressed, right? That there are downsides and detriments to this that we need to adjust. And one of those is trauma, right? Many men have dealt with, with heavy trauma that impacts them over time and dictates what they're doing. Um, and, and that particular topic is something that I want to take on in this next section. That's right, it's me. I sponsored my own shit. Now, men experience various forms of trauma within their lives. The problem is that if they speak up on it, huh? You might get knocked out by men or women. It's just kind of what it is. The problem is that, as I'm going to, to explain in this section of the video, heavy trauma unresolved can lead to unfortunate outcomes for many people. And the system that we have unintentionally encourages it. Exhibit A. One of the forms of trauma that men experience as young boys or teens is sexual abuse. What makes this one so tricky is that there are certain beliefs about men that can almost encourage it to some extent. So there's a video of D-Ray Davis being interviewed by Vlad TV. Uh, and in this particular interview, there, there's a particular video where he's talking about uh, his, his own experience with sexual abuse and how the women, the, the two women that basically sexually abused him, they felt like he wasn't being raised correctly. And I guess apparently molesting him was the way to do it. And Vlad kind of cut him off and was like, two women? Uh, you know, da, 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 you know, in more of a hype, exciting, cheering you on type of way, right? They laughed at his experience. Now, he is a comedian. He is known for telling jokes. He's a funny guy, you know, and there could be a little bit of that in there where they're expecting to laugh at whatever he says. But if you listen to what the uh, host was saying, you know, he went deeper and was like, oh, two women? Yeah, man. <laughs> You know, it was like, you know, it's, if they were sitting next to each other, he would be like hitting his shoulder with his shoulder. You know, the key thing to note is there was a disconnect between him being a, a grown man at that time, but him being an 11 year old boy when that particular event happened. Right. And a, a situation that he clearly did not want to happen. You could tell that it, it impacted him somehow. Right. It impact. He, he clearly says that it impacted him. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say that these people are evil. I'm just saying that this is where we are. This is how things have lined up for us. Part of this is, is the uh, you know, beliefs that are formed within our society. The belief that men are, are hypersexual by default. Now, for some people, you know, it makes some sense. You know, men, it's, you know, it's kind of what it is. 
But for some people, it can be a go ahead to view uh, even little boys a certain way as if that is by default their destiny. This is how you get a group of women kind of lusting after a little boy on social media talking about, oh, he's going to be fine and oh, we're going to do this to him and all this other stuff. And I'm like, he's probably three or something. And then I, I came across one video that I'm not going to post and I'm, I'm not going to add to this. Uh, where it was a, a, a freaking woman twerking on a boy and he had to be, what, four, five? That's not normal. And it was a, a whole group of people in there that apparently had no problem with it. The thing about this is that men have had this happen to them when they're young and not even really know how to process it or that it's even wrong. When something heavily impacts you, especially at a young age, and there's no one around to help you process it in, in a, a, a healthy way, then that pain has to go somewhere. It's almost instinct for, for our minds or bodies to try to find some type of balance, right? For instance, when you're about to fall, it's, it's almost instinct for you to try to grab a hold of something in order to find balance so that you don't fall, so, so that you can have control over your situation. The same thing applies to trauma. When trauma creates an imbalance in your mind, then after a while, you can be tempted to grab a hold of anything in order to find some sort of stability or, or control over your situation or to even just numb yourself from it. When that happens to anybody, when there's no one around to help them through that experience, then it's possible that they could lean into more destructive ways of, of coping with that particular trauma, which Richard Pryor Jr. explains in this particular clip. From releasing these stories and telling these stories, were you able to trace back and discover where the addiction came from or why you may have started using drugs? Yeah, actually, because I didn't, I didn't think me being molested when I was younger a lot. I didn't think that it would have had an impact on me. I didn't think people taking advantage of me sexually when I was underage had an impact on my life. I didn't think any of those things had an impact on anything until I started doing the book. And it was like light bulbs going off. You know, oh my gosh, this is probably why you did this. This is probably why you stayed doing this and all those things. And it's different, it's weird how people look at when a male goes through being sexually abused, it's like, did they ask for it, did they want it? Versus a female of the same age going through it, it was like, oh, she's being taken advantage of. And I think that's one thing that's like really a, a, a sad slope that we're on when we deal with uh, young boys that go through this thing. That's why you don't get a lot of people that want to talk about what they've gone through because they're immediately attacked and said, well, what did you do to bring this on to yourself? When you can have a girl the same age go through the exact same thing, it's like how horrible of a thing that they went through had to endure that. And I think the dynamics of it are, need to change as far as the way we look at young men who go through what I went through. A person's reaction to trauma doesn't have to be addiction. It can also be aggression, as uh, Kevin Gates and Mike Tyson explain in this next clip. I grew up real, real violent and real aggressive, not because I wanted to be, but I was molested when I was a child. So I had this fear of being vulnerable. So I took all every kind of martial arts you could take, and I even boxed, I did everything, and I wanted to be the toughest person on earth. But writing and making music was always an escape for me. Like I never had the like the nuts to come out and say that. This is my first time saying this today since I've yeah, been. Yeah, but I know I know that I know that route too. Why do you think I became the meanest motherfucker on the planet? Somebody did something to me. Yes, sir. And I didn't want it to happen again, so I became this guy. Yeah. Take it to the furthest extent. Yeah. This next situation is easily one of the worst possibilities. So pretty much everybody knows what happened with R. Kelly, right? He has some issues with seeking underage women. He documented it. And after several trials, he actually went to prison. But what many may not know is that even R. Kelly was a victim of sexual abuse when he was young. And yes, I was molested when I was a, uh, from seven on to maybe 13, 14 or something like that. Uh, by people in my family. So, you know, I really think it's a generational curse, you know, because it goes on in the black community, I believe, because as I grew up, I would ask a whole lot of people that I had met, have they ever been, you know, and they would say, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have, yeah. You know, some can remember, some can't remember quite detail-wise, 
but I remember. It was his own sister, you know, and more than likely, somebody did it to her. But when it comes to him, this happened for years, I, it, a, a decent amount of time. As he describes it, he actually started to enjoy it after a while, you know, so he was almost programmed to be destructive. He had no father, no assistance, no way to understand what was happening to him, that it was wrong, uh, and no way to really get the help that he needed to process it in a, a positive way. So unfortunately, he ended up becoming his predator. He became the villain that victimized him when he was young. Absolutely terrible, right? You know, And I'm not taking up for him in any kind of way. I'm just saying we have to understand how some of this stuff happens so that hopefully we can minimize how often it happens. Of course, unresolved trauma isn't limited to sexual abuse. There are various different things that can impact us in, in, in our belief systems in different ways. Some time ago, um, I lost a, a decent amount of family members, right? It was almost like back to back, like people just kept passing away for various reasons, right? Uh, three of them were taken from this world. One took himself from this world and one died of natural causes. So two of them were, were younger than me. And because of how I grew up, certain beliefs that I had, uh, I felt responsible for them to some extent. And because of that responsibility that I felt within myself, it didn't, wasn't, wasn't factual, just something that was within me, I felt like it was my fault somehow, right? Like, what, what didn't I say, right? Like, why didn't I speak to them more often and try to, to, to lead them in a, in a different direction? Um, and after a while, I, I took on a belief that was like, what value do I have as a man if I can't protect the people that I care about? And protection isn't just physical, right? It's mental as, as, as well. It's like advice. It's like, hey, this is that, this is that, da, 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 da. Um, and over time, it, it kind of weighed me down and I lost um, the, the excitement for life to some extent. At one of the funerals, um, I, I saw my, my cousin, he was kind of just grieving heavily, you know, he was, he was crying and everything, just kind of letting it out. And, and for me seeing that, it's like, I was almost jealous. Like, how, how do you, how do you openly grieve like that? How, 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 how do you grieve at all? How? Because in my mind, it's like a wall, you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, 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 hey what you doing? You're going too far, you know? Something that, that would stop me from even being able to, to cry about something that is worthy of tears. And I mean, you know, like right now, I, maybe it's because I, I've taken acting classes, I don't know, but I can think of certain events, cer certain, certain situations, certain connections, and draw tears, right? But these are happy tears. I'm happy for these people in my life. I'm happy that they have, they have gotten so far and done this and done that. You know, my, my, my cousins are basically like my brothers, you know? So when I think about some of the things that they've accomplished, I'm, it, it's like deep, you know what I'm saying? I'm, it's, it's happy tears, I, 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 that is easy. But when it comes to something that has impacted me on a, a so deep level and has caused a lot of inner pain, I can't let it out. It's like a wall right there, you know what I'm saying? Why is it that I can cry tears of joy instantly? but tears of pain, they're blocked, right? And society, family, whatever the hell you want to call it, has almost placed sort of a system within most men, Some much of it out, out of necessity, where it's like you can't, you can't release any type of tears, you can't be vulnerable. And it's, it's so wild because there have been multiple situations that I've dealt with where it's like, okay, this is a worthy moment. I'm feeling emotional pain now is the time right but i can't release those those tears of pain right even by myself when no nobody's around as a man if i shed tears of pain it means i'm vulnerable if i'm vulnerable that means i'm weak if i'm weak that means i'm of low value and if i'm of low value that means i'm unworthy of love and everybody wants love right yeah so as a man with this particular uh, hardline programming, how can you share tears of pain 
during legitimate scenarios uh, if doing so means you are of low value and you are unworthy of love. I don't know. If you got like a lot of pent up crap going on and you can't properly release it, after a while, it, it has to go somewhere, right? And for me, I remember one time I had so much going on and I couldn't really, I didn't really process it correctly. I let out some type of sound where I basically sounded like an undocumented animal. <laughs> And this really highlights the importance of a healthy way to let off some of that pain, like let off some of that steam. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't have, you know, like a friend here or there that I could communicate with about what I was dealing with, I don't know what would happen. You know, because it, it was so much caked up from childhood, teenage life and adult life where it just got to the point where it was a lot to handle. At, at the same time so I had to be able to even just talk about it just to get some of it off just to get it out and be like hey this happened to me and the person I'm talking to doesn't treat me like shit because I'm, I'm dealing with something that was a lot like by itself so healthy ways to deal with what's happening many times heavy trauma that is that that's unresolved can end up pulling our strings from behind the scenes, right? It, it ends up being a, a puppeteer within the, the, the corners of our minds. Next thing you know, you have an addiction that you for some reason need, but can't remember why. You have this anger and need to defend yourself, but you can't place the origin. You feel low value and unworthy of what you truly desire in this life, and the reason why is buried so deep that it's hidden even from yourself. We see people like Kevin Gates and Mike Tyson, and some might think that their pain is a major component to their story, and that may be true. What I also think is that there are plenty of people that end up succumbing to their pain because they don't see a, a foreseeable way out of that particular issue. So what do we do about it, right? What are the potential solutions to the many problems that I've laid out in this video? Well, that's what this next section is for, so stay tuned, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in part three. To be honest, one of the things that really helped me through one of the darkest points of my life was my faith, right? Uh, if, if I hadn't really had any type of connection at all, some type of spirit, spiritual something built up, I don't know what would have happened. Therefore, I feel like it is my obligation <laughs> to tell you that it might work for you, too. So, uh, if you're suffering from some kind of BS situation, just dial, uh, God at on your knees between the hours of now and forever. And he will get to you whenever he gets to you, however he gets to you. I don't know how it's going to work for you. But while many would go along with what I just suggested, some others will subscribe to a different method when it comes to solving men's trauma. I'm not fucking around. Shut up. Stop rolling your fucking eyes. Stop asking for fucking electrolytes and be a fucking man. So some people might see that commercial and be like, oh, OK, well, that, that is exactly what we need to do. We need to be roughing folks up. You say you're going through something. All right. Let me punch you in the gut. Ah, how do you feel? <laughs> My stomach hurts so much right now. <laughs> oh, OK. What about the other stuff? What stuff? That's right. You know, and. For some people, external pressure is what they may need, right? It just depends on the situation. Let's go back to that clip. You got to get off your pity pot. You got to stop blaming everybody else. Look in the mirror and say, this is my life. I'm taking control and I'm getting the drinking problem under control because I want to live. You got to do that. Don't be blaming everybody in the world. The uh, judge herself has actually dealt with addiction and her way of beating it was by force alone. And I've, I've kind of dealt with something like this myself, right? Back in the day when I was a half baller, I was buying up alcohol and I was like, you know what? I got money. I'm going to drink alcohol every night just because I can. And after a week, I started to, it, it felt like my body was craving it, like it needed it to survive. And I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> This, this this would be incredibly expensive. I think I'm going to decide not to 
continue down this path and ever since then it's like once twice three times a year I, I don't want that in my life not like that this is likely what happened with the judge her addiction was likely a choice so force alone could actually solve it while his addiction is more than likely a coping mechanism for a deeper rooted issue which the actual therapist explains here as a clinical psychologist i see that there's something deeper that's going on uh -huh. yeah it is it is. First off, not everybody can solve your problem, right? When it's something coming from an, an uh, emotional place, some people, it's difficult for them to see and assist you in that area because that's not what they're built for, right? Some people, they're just like, force, force, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's you know, that's what they do, you know? She that 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 particular judge, she sees a problem, she's like, Come in now, I done told you what it is. What the <laughs> You know, and and that's how she's going to suggest to solve that issue. But but with the therapist, she knows it's it's her gift to be able to see beyond what is physically happening. It's not just an addiction, it's something else. So even if you solve that addiction, that inner instability will still be there. And it may end up going to something else. Like, what else can I do, you know what I'm saying, to feel stable within myself, right? Which brings up the other thing that, that I, I'm taking from this. You are not only your flesh. You are not only the things that have happened to you. Many people are ruled by their flesh. So when a situation comes up, my mind's telling me no. There's such an overwhelming pull and lack of mental spiritual control. But my body, my body is telling me it. That, that they just do whatever their flesh is telling them to do. And many times it's it's not for their highest good. So I, I kind of want to go deeper into this in, in a different video. But just as a, a basic um, example or whatever, many times we may have something going on with this where we're engaging in bad behavior, being destructive, uh, addiction, so on and so forth. But it really stems from something that happened to us in the past. It's very important to actually try to tend to those areas within ourselves, within our, our minds, our spirits, because many times we can have something going on, some type of trauma or whatever it, it could be, and it'll dictate uh, what you're doing later on and cause you to cause a lot of destruction. Check out this next clip. Great. Those will always deserve to be for rejecting nice guys like me. What the f are we watching? <laughs> what the hell? I'm serious. You females will get enough of rejecting me for being short, especially you black ones. And that's not a threat, it's a promise. And that's all I'm gonna say. So this is obviously disturbing. Uh, he's talking about doing some very hateful things to women and it's not really coming from a good place. Uh, but there's another video where his mom is, is talking about what is actually going on. So let me say this. I am his mother. And I've tried for years to tell him and encourage him to get therapy and help. I've told him multiple times that you have mommy issues. Me, I'm the mama. So you have issues with me. And you need to go to therapy and get those things worked out. Because if you respect me and if you love me and don't have issues with me, then you wouldn't be attacking women for no reason at all. The only time for me, my personal belief, when a person such as him attacks women for no reason is because they have issues with their mother. Cool. But here's the thing. No one deserves that. No one deserves to be talked to any kind of way. No one deserves to be mistreated, threatened, feel unsafe, or anything like that because of his issues. His issues is his issues, and he needs to work on them. There is no excuse. Mental health is very, very, a very serious, serious issue that we have going on, right? But he knows right from wrong. So he has issues with his mom, right? And those issues are making him feel comfortable hating other women. Uh, and this is something that I've seen in actual, you know, popular people's backstories where there was a moment where there was an issue with their mom and then later on they have issues with all women no matter what they say their actions result in the devaluing and mistreating of women right because something may have happened with you or you may be dealing with something and this this happens right you know our our, our families and stuff like that like no nobody's really perfect we're often trying to just figure out what the hell we're doing we have to be careful about uh one the things we're dealing with and two the the ways that we're being led out of the things that we're dealing with right 
Some people will see what you're going through and lead you out in a very destructive way. And it's not always on purpose. They may have good intentions. They may uh, just be pushing off whatever the hell they were told was was the best idea. Uh, But that doesn't mean that it's actually good for you. There are so many different avenues for our pain, trauma to be captured and redirected towards some of the most destructive things out here. And it doesn't always have to be intentional. Some people are doing it on purpose, knowing the type of chaos and pain and lives lost that are partially uh, due to their own actions, due to, to their own misinformation. But some people don't know. Some people think that they're doing the right thing. And this isn't necessarily something that's only unique to men, right? That This is every freaking where. I'm going to get to that in other videos, but it's everywhere Um, and we have to be careful about it because sometimes these avenues can make you feel incredibly powerful right but you're 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 powerful in your destruction of your own society many times these beliefs that, that that are pushed out it just keeps stuff going it keeps the chaos going and recreates more pain in other people's lives and other people like you so we have to be careful about uh who's leading us out of our pain on top of that Uh, We have to understand the people that have harmed us are people that we're close to, right? Family, friends, lovers, so on and so forth. And it can be easy to hold grudges against those people. But we have to understand that they they may have been pushed some things from their family and their forefathers or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So much that they're hurting you because they were hurt and they were taught that it was the right thing to do, right? What are you crying that they're neglecting what you may be going through because they were taught to do that. You don't cry, all right? You keep your chin up. Come on, keep your chin up. Because they were neglected, and it just, it keeps, it keeps it going. 26 years buried in the deepest, darkest jungle, and I still became my father. All right? So, in, in, in many situations, what you're dealing with isn't just, just pain. It, is, it, it isn't just trauma. Uh, it isn't a chaotic environment for you to just take up space and rest in it's something that you actually need to learn about and transform right it's 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 not something to where you you uh hate this particular group of people because oh well, somebody similar hurt me in the past there's a a scripture that really speaks to this particular part and it's uh i believe it's ephesians yeah ephesians 6 12 for for we wrestled not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the, the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so it's not just your mother, your father, your, your family, friends, your ex-lovers, men, women, so on and so forth. It's much beyond just that, That right? It's not these random groups of people, who, whoever they are. It's much deeper than that. It's, it's the generational curses, right? It's the ways that people profit off of the confusion of, of masses of people, right? It's the different things that have been uh, built within our minds to make it seem as if destroying each other is the only way to survive, right? Um, so sometimes the, the things that you've dealt with are not just uh, something that you sit in, it's not just uh, who you are or anything like that. It's something that needs to be transformed, right? It, it, you, you need to address it, heal from it, learn from it, and then decide for, for your own life how you can best avoid that same situation, right? Some people go through something and they take actions to better themselves as a counter, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes the things that we go through aren't just meant to destroy us, right? It's not meant to make us go down these terrible paths. It's really meant to, um, you know, if if we can take it and not just view it as the worst possible thing, then we can transform it into something positive. We can take control in a positive way instead of take control in a negative way. Instead of uh, be destructive and instead of being lured into feeling powerful while causing destruction within your society or maintaining chaos within your your society. Uh, There are healthy ways to gain control. And one would be, you know, learning from that particular lesson. Like, what can you take from it? Like, like how how can you see it differently, learn from it, and become a better person because of it? You see this in many people's lives right many of the the greatest human beings out here right uh they they took what they went through and they they transformed it into something awesome right 
So within your family, your generational curse situation, it may be up to you to actually change that pattern, right? To stop it, okay? Whatever happened with that young man's issues with his mom, if he can learn from it and become a better person, get the help he needs, he can transform it and not continue that into future generations, right? Instead of just hating, like giving in to his pain and hating women, he can change it into something positive. Other ways to do this, you know, I, I'm this is solutions, stuff like that, uh, is to actually get into creativity, whether it's painting, writing, YouTube, music. Kevin Gates put out a song where he was talking about the things that he had dealt with um, and how it dramatically impacted him. But then to his surprise, and guys walk up to me in the gym like bodybuilders and just hug me and cry and be like, man, I went through the same shit you went through. Like, keep doing what you're doing. So I'm like, I guess I'm on the right yeah, path. You're, you're really prolific out there. There were so many other people, other men, that were like, yo, thank you so much for doing this song because it really helped me out. It really, like, I'm glad I'm not alone, you know? DMX did the same thing, you know? DMX is like, yo, write that pain. Right. Because you know what? Ain't about you being ashamed of anything. It's about you saying that to help somebody else. Right. All you little artists out there listening, you hear this? You hear this real write expression? That write that pain. Write that pain. Yes. At 13, I was fucking a bitch 26. Sexual abuse, but I was getting my kicks. Then they say something broken that need to be fixed. Because all I want to do is fuck a lot of chicks. I used to get beat senseless by a mom, dude. So I grew up thinking, that's just what moms do. Running away, but had nowhere to run to. So I accepted a seven, I must have been wrong too. Fuck out of there. Write that pay, nigga. He wrote about things that he went through. And just just for people to know that they're not alone, to 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 be removed from that isolation, that by itself is heavy so writing about it creating something uh so that hopefully other people can can be helped as well cannot feel alone that's that's a good way to get out of or to to channel the pain that you've been through in order to make it something positive of course i mentioned therapy Another one is physical activity. Get out there, get fit, get your body right. Take control of that and reform your life to some extent. So one major reason why I'm doing this video is that I don't, it's like I, I see what's going on, but I see that it's possible for it to change, right? You know, I don't accept this for me. I don't, I don't accept this way of life for you. Um, I believe that things can shift. You know, we're not obligated to remain the same. The things that you've been through, learn from them. The generational curses within your family, break them, right? Heal from the things that, that have harmed you in terrible way. You know, as, as men, I, I completely understand that it can be tempting or uh, feel unsafe to actually address whatever's going on, right? You know, uh, to, to, to even speak about the pain that you may have been through. But sometimes that's what's necessary in order to get to the other side. Because it, it, it's almost like a, a, a big bad wolf that's standing in front of the door to the next step of your life. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he's, he barking at you when you get close. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's howling. Rawr, 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 you know? <laughs> If you choose courage instead of uh, inactivity, you know what I'm saying. But if you move in spite of the fear that you, that, that you may be feeling, the you know insecurity and so on and so forth, uh, then you'll know that it's it can't really stop you completely from getting to where you want to go. The only thing that's really stopping you is yourself. The little wolf will, will, will go away. You fade away after a while. You know what I'm saying. You might try to come back every now and then. Like, hey, man, remember me? You know what I'm saying. You know, been a long time. You know what I'm saying. But you don't have to give in to that. You know, you, you decide what you're doing, right? That pain, channel it to something positive and be very wary. There are so many different avenues out here to channel your instability, your need to belong, your pain, your confusion in, 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 into things that basically maintain chaos within our society. Be mindful of that. Think about it. Don't, don't just accept whatever crap they're gonna give you, so. I don't know what else to say, y'all. Uh, I have redone this video multiple times. I've been working on it for a while. Uh, I probably have like 16 hours of footage of me talking about solutions for this section alone, right? Because it's so much that I have to say that I just didn't know what the hell to do. Generally speaking, I would say we have to address how we see men, how, how men see themselves, uh, normalizing, receiving the help that we need, 
changing these destructive behaviors, destructive beliefs into something positive, into something that can uh, alter how we uh, deal with our families, how we engage with them. You know, somebody there that can talk to you about what's going on and help you out of that situation. There's it. it there's so much to say that I don't know that I could fit in in this section of the video. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to continue watching. I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I'm <laughs> so I'm basically going to do different videos kind of here and there that are much shorter than this that capture certain topics or things that I basically had to remove from the video because it would have made it, you know, eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, was it like four episodes of uh, Star Wars? <laughs> uh, what? A a New Hope from... No, yeah, so a, from... <laughs> was that like a, a, a Phantom Menace to a New Hope? Something like that? That's, that's too long of a video. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, I have so much to say, so many different things. Other videos, uh, I came up with, with a quote with the direction that I'm going. But basically, uh, if you're going to stick around, please do. Feel free. But just know, I'm. I, it's not my intention to cater to a specific group of people. So at some point, I'm probably gonna piss you off. I mean that shit, and it, it, I'm not doing it on purpose. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm. I'm just like I have things to say, but I know, you know, and, and that that kind of held me back a little bit because I don't like I don't want to intentionally hurt anybody or whatever. I'm like shit. How can I do this? And da, 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 da. You know, but some things, some things may sting a little bit. Some things might, it might hurt to hear something that you may want to hear. So I don't know. So if you really felt this video and you feel like you want to support, there are many ways to do so. I have a book, Who Is Your God? Uh, it heavily, it, it is heavily connected to this particular video. It deals with trauma and, and things that we treat as our gods that dictate our lives and a lot of other stuff. So check that out. Uh, I got merch and I have ways to donate. So any one of those, Feel free, you know, if you want to. Uh, outside of that, there's, of course, the free way to support, which is like, share, and comment, and subscribe, and stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what else to say, y'all. I'm actually, am I done with this video? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so if you have anything you want to share in the comment section, uh, ways that you connected with this, feel free to do so. Open space. And I, I may do another video uh, kind of going over so, some of the things in the uh, comment section just to kind of uh further discuss this particular issue um that we're facing because i i think the more we talk about it in a healthy way the more we can beat down the demon <laughs> you know what i'm saying so that's my theory we'll we'll see how it goes but i have a lot of stuff to say and as i said it's gonna be a lot of other videos that i had to remove from this and i'm just gonna do other stuff uh based on those topics so check them out <laughs>